Hey everybody, I'm back for another video, this time on the BMW S55 engine's cooling system. I've looked around and haven't seen a lot of information about this, and I've actually seen a lot of conflicting information. So I tried to do a little bit of research, which included contacting the head of the service department at one of the big BMW dealerships to ask for some more straightforward information. Now, I'm not trying to claim to be an expert on this, guys. I'm just trying to do some research and put it together. So if there's anybody out there that has additional information to add or something to change, please let me know in the comments below. So I thought I'd make a little video about it to share what I've learned. And yes, I'm aware that my quarantine hair is getting out of control. I found some really cool illustrations, so I'm going to try to use those to convey this information. And I'll mix in a little bit of the actual engine on my M4 to show you how they correlate. My goal at the end of this is to actually change all of the coolant in my M4, so there will be videos for that. Okay, so here is the first diagram of the engine cooling system that I wanted to show you. It's a good representation of all of the parts. The S55 engine cooling system consists of engine and charge air cooling, as well as oil cooling for the engine oil and the MDCT. So first we can go through and look at all of the labeled parts here and tell you what they are. So number one up here is the upstream low temperature radiator, and this is part of the charge air system. Number two is the large radiator in the back, and that is uh, the engine radiator. Number three on front of that right here is the low temperature radiator, and that is also part of the charge air system. Number four is the indirect charge air cooler. A lot of people call this the intercooler. Number five on the back of it Attached to it is the coolant expansion tank for the charge air system. And you can see that there is a second expansion tank right here, number six, and that is the ex coolant expansion tank for the engine. Number seven right here is the thermostat, and that is for the transmission oil cooling for the MDCT. Number eight is the upstream radiator. So this in conjunction with the large radiator here, cool the engine. Number nine on the bottom, horizontally stuck in here is the engine oil cooler. So it's actually not a part of either the engine or the charge air cooling systems, but it is separate. It's just a straight up radiator to cool the engine oil. And finally, number 10 right here is the MDCT transmission oil cooler. All right, this diagram here shows both systems, the overall cooling system of the S55 engine. It's a great color diagram to show you the flow of the systems and where the actual cooling takes place. You can see where the hot coolant comes in and the cooling happens, leaving the cooler coolant flowing out. You can pause the video on this diagram so that you can correlate all of the numbers with what they are. So when I was looking around on the forums researching this so that I could change the coolant in my car, a lot of people talked about changing the coolant, but other than one little sentence here and there from somebody that knew what they were talking about, nobody really pointed out that there were two cooling systems essentially in this car. There's an engine cooling system, which is considered the high temperature system, and there is a charge air cooling system, or referred to as low temperature. Now this diagram focuses on the engine cooling side of it. You can see, if you look closely in light gray, they have grayed out the previous diagrams section on the charge air cooling. So it's really helpful to look at these as two separate systems. So I'll kind of try to break down this engine cooling system. You have your main radiator right here, and then you have an upstream radiator, which works in conjunction to help cool off your coolant. And right here represents the expansion tank. Now this engine compared with the previous engine is different in that number seven right here is a mechanical coolant pump. So that means it's belt driven and when you turn the car off, it is no longer running. So number nine up here represents your turbochargers. Number eight is a separate electrical pump. And this pump will stay running for some amount of time after you turn the car off to help keep your turbos cool. This diagram is nicely color coded with blue and red showing where the cooled fluids come in. They get pumped through the block and back out and the red 
gets pushed through your radiators to cool it off once again. And behind your main radiator right here, number 15 is the electric fan. Number 12 here is your coolant temperature sensor. It is placed right here on your outflow where the hottest temperature should be. Number 10 here is your heat exchanger. And 11, it's another electric coolant pump and it provides heating for the passenger compartment. So since there are two separate systems that are independent of each other, you're going to obviously have to drain and refill both of them if you want to change the coolant on this car. So I asked the lead mechanic at BMW, what is the official way to drain the engine cooling side? He told me that there are actually two official options that BMW tells them to use. The first one is to vacuum all of the fluid out and with it under pressure to vacuum fill it. Now, of course, that requires an expensive machine to do that, which I don't have and you probably don't have. So he said that there is actually a second way that they recommend, and that is to disconnect the lower hose from the auxiliary engine radiator, which is right here. And I'm going to describe to you what he told me the proper way to do this is. And in another video, I will actually do it and see how it turns out. So our expansion tank is right here, and that is the highest point that holds fluid. So he says that you should jack the car up at the front left corner, which would be over here. And then disconnect this hose, let everything drain out. Of course, you're going to want to undo the cap. And then with the car still jacked up after it all drains out, reconnect the hose and fill it back up. So after you fill it up, you leave the cap off, lower the car back down and start the car. You want to turn the heat to high and the fan to its lowest position and run the car until it starts burping itself. After three to five minutes of that, you want to put the cap back on and you want to drive the car, making sure to leave the heat on. After you drive, you're going to bring it home park it and let it cool overnight. And in the morning, you're gonna check the level in here again and top it off to be back up to max. He also made sure to point out to me that water is what does the damage to engines and cooling systems, not the actual coolant itself. So I'm going to be using BMW's approved coolant, mixed 50-50 with water, but he said that there are actually waterless coolants that are better for the car. He mentioned Evans waterless coolant. He said that there are other good brands, but his recommendation, if I was going to keep the car forever, ever meaning like 20 years, that he would go ahead and use the Evans waterless coolant. But if I was only going to be keeping the car 10 years or less, not to worry about it and just use the BMW coolant, mostly because it is a pain to change it and you have to flush the system really well if you're going to put Evans in it because it is not compatible with the BMW. All right, this is a pictorial image of the engine cooling system. So same thing as the last diagram, but just actually what it physically looks like. So you can see here the auxiliary radiator. It's connected in parallel to the radiator with coolant lines, which just increases the cooling surface area. It's just nice to see how all of the hoses and parts are laid out. This diagram shows the coolant passages. Uh, number one here represents the passage of fluid around the intake valves number two around the injector, number three is the exhaust valves, number four shows where the connection of the coolant hose and the thermostat is, it's considered a small cooling circuit, and number five shows the connection of the coolant hose and the radiator, which is the large cooling circuit. And as I mentioned before, the S55 engine uses a conventional belt-driven coolant pump, which replaces the electric coolant pump known from the N54 and N55 engines. The coolant passages in the cylinder head are also used for indirect cooling of the fuel injectors. The following graphic shows that the coolant flows around the valves and fuel injectors. The heat transfer of these components is therefore reduced to a minimum. Here the small cooling circuit for the exhaust turbochargers is highlighted. So the conventional coolant pump is driven by the drive belt and can't be used for cooling the turbochargers after the engine is shut down. So BMW provided a 20 watt electric coolant pump and that's used for the turbocharger coolant circuit. So after you turn the car off, that will still run to keep your turbochargers cooled. So the main radiator for the engine is gonna be down here in the middle. 
and the auxiliary radiator is going to be right over here on the driver's side behind these little honeycomb vents. And the expansion tank is this big one right here on top. So if you look down here between these two carbon fiber pieces, you can see the electric fan. And then if you can see down through here, you can see the manual water pump and the belt that is going around it to drive it. It's kind of tough to see. All right, now we're moving on to the charge air cooling system. So this diagram highlights that and the engine system is grayed out. In the S55 engine, like in the S63 engine, indirect charge air cooling is used. During the indirect charge air cooling, the charge air is cooled by a low temperature cooling circuit. The low temperature cooling circuit is then cooled by two radiators by ambient air. So number one here is the low temperature radiator. Number two is called the upstream low temperature radiator. And for this system, we have an electric coolant pump, not a manual belt driven one and the expansion tank is here and it is actually connected to the indirect charge air cooler. And this is a diagram of the charge air cooling system. BMW tells us that this circuit holds approximately four liters of fluid. And the interesting thing is for the engine cooling system, it does not specify and I had the mechanic check. He couldn't find it anywhere in any of the documents or manuals that he looked at to see how much it would actually hold. He said when they usually vacuum it out, it goes into a bucket and they can vacuum back in the same amount. The only numbers he could find on that was the recommended pH for the water, which was six point something to nine point something, I think. But not an actual amount of coolant. So number four here is the electric coolant pump for the low temperature circuit, otherwise known as the charge air circuit. And this is an 80 watt electric coolant pump, in case you were wondering. So just like for the engine side, there are two radiators that are connected in parallel and they are supplied by this expansion tank that is secured at the charge air cooler. Okay, so I asked him how to change the coolant in this side, and most people online say to disconnect the lower connection here. So he said the official way is to disconnect here, but also to disconnect hoses from both sides of the pump, and that will allow you to drain all of the fluid. And this is the system where I have read the initiation procedure to start the electric pump to bleed the whole system electronically. And he said you can actually do that for the charge air cooling side. However, he still recommends using a vacuum bleeder to put the fluid back in because this doesn't allow the pump to run dry at all, cause any issues. So when I get around to doing this, uh, we'll see which way I decide to do it. Okay, back to the engine bay of my M4. Just wanted to keep giving you guys a glimpse of what it really looks like compared to a diagram, it's always easier for me to see it in person. This is the indirect charge air cooler. And you can see on the back of it is attached the expansion tank for the charge air cooling system. These are the hoses going in and out. And they run down through here to our radiators. So on the passenger front behind the honeycomb grills, it's the upstream low temperature radiator. And the main radiator is back in the middle. And the electric coolant pump is down here somewhere. I'm not going to be able to see it. Hopefully I'll be able to show it to you when I change the coolant and lift it up to see it from the bottom. I really hope you guys found this helpful. So please subscribe to the channel. As soon as I change the coolant in the M4, I will post those videos and you will be notified. So we'll see you guys soon.